So I thought I'd do a bit of a video now about how I've got as far as I have with this ESP32 and, and what information it's uh, sending across to Signal K. So I'm going to run through the setup, the installation process and getting the software onto your, uh, onto your PC or, or laptop um, and how you can basically start building this up. So I actually built mine using version 1 but as I'm recording this now they've just released version 2. So what I've decided to do is actually migrate from version 1 to 2 um, and I'll build this again in version 2 as we move forward. So it's Sense ESP version 2. So here's a picture of the um, small ESP32. It's got uh, Bluetooth and Wi-Fi built in. Um, I opted for the one with the headers pre-soldered um, which was around I think it was around £7.20. Yeah, there it is. Um, so this is the one that I went for just to make it easier to connect and just to save me a job really soldering. There's a USB-C port at the bottom of the device um, and that's how you can power it. Um, but it's how you program it. So you basically connect it to the, to the USB port on your computer. Um, you can then see the device and you can write your code to it. So once you've developed your code in a platform, you basically flash the chip or write to the chip on, on the board and your code then is stored um, until you make any modifications. So the Sense ESP documentation um, refers to using visual code, so that's what I did. So the first thing you're going to need to do is head over to uh, code.visualstudio.com and find the appropriate version for your operating systems, whether that's Windows or Mac or Linux. So once you've installed that, you're going to be presented with this screen. So it actually uses something called Platform IO. Um, and within this you can code different boards so I'll show you how to get that next. So next click on the extensions tab and in the top search for platform IO. You can see it here on the left. Click on that and you'll need to click the install button. If it asks you to install any additional packages do this as part of the installation it'll save you some time and hassle later. And then once that's installed the Visual Studio Code might want to restart but once that's installed you'll see this icon on the left. Click on that and you should be presented with this screen and this is where you basically start your new project. So you can see down the left we've got a couple of different tabs for boards and libraries and platforms and things but you don't really need to worry about that too much just yet you just need to click on new project. So if you click on to new project give your project a name And then depending on which board you've actually purchased, find the board in the list. For me, it's a fire beetle, but your board should be listed there. And the framework is uh, Arduino. Let it create the project. You should be then presented with a navigation menu or a file structure on the left. And there's two main files that you're looking for here. One's in the source folder um, and the other one is platform.io. So the platform.io one has got a lot of configuration of actually the device and we're going to use that one in a minute and the main.cpp which is in the source directory is actually where we're going to upload the application to. Just before we continue it's probably a good idea to actually plug your board in now. Now there's two different types of drivers I seem to have found out and um, there's the there's this the CH34 version um, and there is a CP2102. Now depending on what operating system you are using um, yours might work straight away. Mine didn't on a Mac um, and I went a bit down a rabbit hole here trying to find uh, drivers for the CP2102 to actually realize that mine had a different chipset on board. So have a really close look at the, at the device um, towards the bottom and you'll see the very small chip with the label on. That's the driver pack that you need to install to connect to your device if it doesn't automatically detect when you plug it in. So if you head over to the Sense ESP website, um, you'll see that a lot of work has been done on this. When I first started with this, you had, you had to manually create a lot of these files, but they've actually created a, a template, a project template file. So now you just need to download this um, and import it into your project. So download that. So download it, um, and how to do that is you click on code and then download zip. Once that's downloaded to your machine, um, expand that file out and then what you can do is import it into the project. Make sure you select the board type that you have um, from the list above. For me again it's that Fire Beetle and click import. So this has already pre-configured the platform IO file, something that you had to do manually last time. So that, that information now is already set and it's set to the new version, version 2 there. So we don't need to do anything on that page and they've also handily included 
um, a pre-done config here so you've got some sensors and things all ready to go and um, this is basically the config that you can see here and you've got some options along the bottom this is how you build the project so you click on build and it'll go through and it'll build it should only take a second because I've actually just built it um, before I film this bit and um, but what I'll do I'll show you the different buttons and the way that you can clean a project and actually start from scratch so as you can see that's a success so that's really good news everything in there is already configured and, and ready to go so I've just hit the clean button and that just gets rid of it and I'll basically recompile so this time we will start again we'll click build and now it's going to build all the files that are needed that are associated with that project like some of the uh, Arduino files and other parts of Sense ESP so if you see some yellow popping up here that's just variables and things that um, is probably information that's probably been pulled from somewhere else it's nothing to worry about as such it's red that you need to be concerned about um, but it, are, it is things that you can go back through and have a look at later on and just either change something or configure something um, but generally that is okay you, you can just ignore it So as your project comes to an end, you'll see how much RAM and flash is being used and then hopefully you'll see a success. So let's just take a quick look through this file. So at the very top here you can see some include statements and this is where we're picking up other things like sensor configuration or other files that need to make the actual program work. We've got a little bit of serial information there, so the setting the serial speed and then we're actually building the app from this point on. So here you can see where it's going to connect to your Signal K instance. And then a little bit further down we can start to see the config for these particular ones. So it looks like we're doing some sort of uh, voltage check um, and um, it's going to read the voltage using probably a voltage divider circuit or something like that. That appears to be how the uh, ESP does a lot of its analog inputs. So that seems to be pretty much standard config and then a little bit further down here we're reading a digital input so literally an off or on so I'm just going to show you where all the example configs are so if you head over to the sense ESP website uh, on github you can see that there's an example folder with lots of different ones in there there's the temperature sender one which is one that I've used there is a analog input which again that's something I've used as well and there's another one that's actually on the old um, uh, release train of this which is um, using a, a, a BMP sensor so uh, again I'll run through all that here's a lot of information on how you get started and, and help and things and um, but what I'll do is I will build mine up now from scratch and show you the various parts of the config so what I've done here is I've opened side by side the configuration that I made on version 1 and the configuration now of the example that we've just loaded up so you can see straight away that there are some things that are the same however already the sensors directory seems to be one level down so um, the analog input was sensors analog input for example and now it's sense ESP sensors analog input so I don't know whether everything is going to carry across from what I've done to this one straight away so that's something for us to test so there's four parts to what I've got so far there's an RPM gauge so there's a configuration for an RPM gauge there's a digital temperature sensor there's an analog temperature sensor and there's also a temperature sensor off a BMP 280 which you can see at the top there this bit of config here is used to work out the resistance of the voltage divider circuit which I'll show shortly and that then translates to an ohm value with a known temperature against it so that's used to pick up the temperature of the uh, engine coolant so that temperature sensor changes its value its own value as it obviously gets uh, warmer you can see here that that that, uh, that drops that own value drops so when the engine is warm we're getting a lower value than than we are before so basically how you put that together is you either need to know what the values are so if the manufacturer provides you with a handy sheet to say this is the known value against a temperature sensor then you can just literally copy and paste that into the config um, and that's basically one of the examples that I used I got the known values against the temperatures just to complicate things it was in Kelvin so you just have to convert that 
So that's that's what that chunk of code is doing there. So if I scroll down a little bit further, here you can see this is a digital temperature sensor and literally it's just a couple of lines of code. It's then um, translated to a signal K path and that's the sensor that's picking up the exhaust temperature. And the nice thing with that is there's no other configuration required. You literally tell it to how, how fast you want it to, to read. So that's pretty much every half second and away it goes. Um, so that's, that's dead easy. RPM is a little bit more tricky, but again, it's not a, a massive amount of code. So um, we're giving it a signal K path. And one thing you will notice is they're all written slightly different. So obviously different people write them in different ways, but you can start to pick up really which bit's doing what. So here's the signal K path and that's propulsion main revolution. So that's gonna, where that's gonna record the data. There's some configuration, so a lot of this you can actually reconfigure through the web uh, interface, which is really handy, so you don't have to keep coming back to this and reflashing the chip. You can actually just change values by going to its web address. We can see here, basically, it's taken a digital input, and um, when it sees that digital input, it's basically saying the engine has gone round one revolution. So there's a number of different parameters that you can change here, because depending on how you're picking that up, it could literally be one revolution, or you could be sensing it off something else that's maybe doing five to one or there's some sort of ratio involved so there's a way to multiply this and change what you're actually seeing based on how you're picking that information up again i'll go into that a little bit further here's the code for the bmp sensor again dead easy when you're using one of these you basically call the sensor you tell it where it is so this is very similar to what how you configure it on signal k and you tell it the output. So I've got actually uh, pressure uh, and I have got room temperature. So they're the two values that I'm taking from that sensor. And that's just stuck onto the front of the box or it will be. Uh, here's the rest of the engine temperature config. So from the very top we had there, we have to tell it what the input voltage is, which is 3.3. You have to tell it one side of the voltage divider circuit, the known resistor value, and then it goes through this transformation. So it picks up the voltage. It then goes back up to the very top here and tries to work out what the voltage the other side is. That then gets converted into Kelvin, and then it literally presents that answer to um, an SK output. So that is the figure that we would see um, in signal k so the signal k path and then that's the end and it loops round the config so it just goes back round to the top goes through the whole lot again and away it goes now this side looks a little bit different so already we're, we're we're changing things a little bit and saying if there's a change value or if we notice something so i might have to do a little bit more work to get this across but we'll still attempt to do it and um so here look every time it changes so um there might be a little bit more config that we have to do, but the first thing that I've noticed from the very, very top is that the directories are different. So what I'm gonna try and do is build my config now in the new template in version two and actually see whether it'll compile. Um, so I'll do a little bit of that work now and then I will show you how far I've got. I think I'm gonna have a little bit of a problem with this temperature sensor, so I might have to come back to that one. Have a look at the RPM sensor and that's exactly the same. So I'm just gonna take all of this code from this side um, and I am going to just give myself a little bit of space. I'm going to paste that in over here. Uh, cut a little bit of this code out because I don't need it and, and I want to try and make it look very similar to this. So we'll take that chunk out of there because um, it's just text. I'm going to take that bit out. And I'm going to take this. Now there was another when you start merging these sometimes you'll you'll have the same variable so there was a variable in here which was pin um, so um, in these two configs they actually set a, a character so a constant character or, or a valuable um, it was unit 8 underscore T pin equals so it's looking for the word pin and um, so and when you start merging the configs together sometimes you have to take those bits out and actually specify the pin in the config itself. I've done the same uh, here. If you remember on this side, um, we had unit read delay 500. So I've deleted that out and I've actually put the delay in there. So if you hover over that, it will actually tell you what um, what parts of the config are. So that there's handy little tips as you work your way through just to set uh, these variables and things. So that's why I've put that delay in there.
Okay, so what I've done now is I've basically copied all of the config across from one uh, app to the other. So this is still um, version one and this is still version two on this side. So there's a couple of things that I need to, to look up. I need to look up this this BMP sensor and also the one wire. And I've now found a couple of examples with some information online on the uh, website to show how that is now done within this. There's some additional sensor libraries now that it includes and it just it just calls the information slightly differently um, and how it builds them up. So I'll refer back to that in a second. But basically I've copied across. I've, I've removed a lot of the the information out of them now because I understand what each path is doing so if we look down I've got this is my one wire temperature sensor config which is going to need to be changed the RPM one looks just like it does previously in the example and, and this is the code here it hasn't changed I've just taken out the text so I've just condensed that down to make that a little bit easier I don't need all that now further down this is the BMP sensor this is going to need changing and again there's a little bit of information on what I need to do so I'll change that in a second and then right at the very bottom we've got the engine temperature sensor config which is here um, and that also uses this uh, sample config at the top to convert the um, ohm value to the Kelvin which we, we discussed earlier in the video so what I'll do now is I'll just share this page here and you can see um, under the documentation that there's some additional resources and some of these talk about, I mean, there's there's some Vic, Victron stuff there. I mean, mine's connected to my Pi, so I don't need to do that. But there's some things here about one wire. So we'll have a bit of a read uh, of this and understand whether we can just take some of the code out of one of these one wires. Because again, see, now you've got to, this bit of config is actually done in that platform IO um, file. So um, it looks like we've got to call another library to get this working and then hopefully in here somewhere okay so it actually looks then like the config is probably very similar might not need to do too much might just need to actually include those parts in that first file um, this this is probably what I need to do so I'll just show you where that is so let's take both of those so if we jump back into here, and uh, let's just collapse this down because that's my old one. See this platform I/O file here. We open that up. Okay, there we go. So where are we calling? There are. That's where we're calling the library. So if we just paste what we've got underneath. So we don't need that line because it's duplicated. We don't need that line because that's duplicated. And that's what we're going to need. So we need to add that additional one wire sensor and I wonder whether the BMP sensor is going to be exactly the same so we'll just knit back okay so here let's see if we can work out what to do with this one so again if we open the platform there we go so they seem to be calling now the um, additional library definitions as part of of this file where originally it was put in the top part of the config I'll show you where that is so let me copy this out if we jump back we jump back to this example on the left they were calling them here um, so it looks like we need to add an additional one in there to get that sensor to work so let's save that back to this main one just copying this from the example put this at the top because it's slightly different so let's paste that in there we need to include that I've noticed that there's actually quite a few errors this didn't happen the first time so it seemed to compile but it, it, it hasn't actually updated the chip so we've got a problem with this this here as you can see it all this highlighted in red we've got an issue with so one I have just create corrected this is now SK output flow where in version one it wasn't I think it was SK output but it's actually SK output float so that has been updated looking at the at the example here this is this is done like this now add and it's not a capital it's add sample
There's a couple of things that I put in the wrong place. So I put this part in the wrong place. So that didn't compile correctly um, and it generated a couple of errors. Um, and um, I've had to just make some modifications to the BMP sensor. So my sensor uses um, OX76 rather than OX77. And there's a little bit of text here. It doesn't really tell you where to put that value. So I found out that if you put that value there, um, in between the brackets and that sorts that problem out so that sensor is now reading every so often you can see here I've got a pressure reading well we didn't have a pressure but we had a temperature and a pressure reading or it should be generating a temperature and a pressure reading so the example online doesn't actually show you the pressure reading so how I've got around that is I have worked out that um, from the standard library um, after the BMP if you put read pressure as you can see there it's actually telling you what the value is so I don't think I need this float I don't I don't think I need that but I I don't know how to program it myself so I've copied the example pasted it in given my, myself another um, variable here that I can call and then I've used read pressure instead of read temperature this converts what the sensor reads from degree C to Kelvin so I've just remove that from mine because I don't want to change the pressure figure the pressure figure is correct so I've copied basically that and just modified those two things and then further down in the config I have replicated what they did in terms of the room temperature with just calling it pressure so I've copied the lines I've called this pressure um, used the same reading obviously called the um, information uh, from the top there and then I've created this new path of how it reports it back. So again, copy, paste, obviously change temperature to pressure here and change the output to pressure. And now I can see pressure and temperature back in signal K. So that's working correctly. One thing I have lost is I have lost the runtime. So when this script is running, so I guess some of the changes that they've made now is that they are where previously it looked like they were constantly going through the entire config all the time it just looks like it's looping or it's reading these sensors so you're generating a lot less traffic um, but now you're not sending things like um, signal strength so it was sending Wi-Fi signal strength and it was sending uptime and I think memory and CPU were not, not too bothered about them they're not values that I want to read but the runtime is useful so I'm just going to work out now how I put the runtime into this and then I think I'm pretty much there. So if you read the documentation you actually find that they've um, they've included information on how you can migrate from version 1 and what things have actually changed. So one of the things that I want is, is this system info sensor. So I want to know the, uh, um, the uptime of the device because I'm actually using that to log hours. I think it's useful anyway to be perfectly honest to know when that device is, is up and on. Um, so that is the line that I'm going to need to include. It can just be called like that. Right, see what happens. And that appears to be working. So I think that, other than testing the RPM config, which is um, something that I haven't done yet, I think that's pretty much migrated everything from um, version 1 to version 2. Um, So I guess if there's any questions or anything that I need to run through, you know, post some comments. I, I'm learning this myself as I go along, so I, I will try my best. Um, but um, if anybody's got any any questions or anything, any any code that they notice that I've done really wrong, you know, I'm, I'm happy to to change it and to learn from it. So, you know, post the comments, ask the questions. Let's get a bit of conversation going, and and if that's been helpful, then um, give it the thumbs up. What I will do next is I will run through some of the circuitry that, that um, I've set up. I want to test all of this now. 
um, but then I'll run through the circuitry and show you the sensors and things because obviously this the code is one side and some of these sensors are off the shelf the one wire sensor is just off the shelf very easy to do the BMP just plugs straight into the the ESP board so that that's fine the temperature sensor for the engine that uses a voltage divider circuit which again is you can find them but I'll, I'll just document what I've done and the RPM gauge which is something that I haven't tested yet um, is also using a bit of circuitry that I found on the internet so um, I'll run some further tests and report back and then um, I'll document that part of it as well as I say any questions post them in the comments